Blaine, it's not working. <laughs> Blaine, I don't know how people do that. I know some guys can remember it's every wild. single play, every yeah. every game, every, yeah. like, yeah. once the game ends, it's over for me, it's out of my head. The next player joining us in the film room, Grayson Allen, appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you. We're actually in the Real Bucks Theater. This is the first time that we've done this. Where's your seat in here? It's down three to my left right there. And right it's the same every time, right? Yeah, same every time. I figured, I figured. Um, the other day, Giannis was talking about the fact that he sprinted back on defense just so he wouldn't be on Coach Bud's <laughs> film session. Uh, what are these sessions like? Um, it depends. Uh, it depends on what we need to focus on. A lot of times I'd say it's little stuff on defense. Um, a lot of the stuff offensively, he just kind of lets us play. If it's anything offensively, it's slight positioning or different spacing or something new he puts, wants to put in, but a lot of it focuses on defense. What's interesting to me is the amount of film that you all watch. So I'm wondering if you could break down a game day, how many different sessions you have? Uh, so with film, we usually have one in the morning at shoot around, um, and that's usually quick personnel film on the team we're playing, and then a quick like maybe four or five of their most popular actions that they run. Um, and then for me during my individual time, I'll have film with Charles, so we'll go over some of my like personal clips, and then another film like with like 35 minutes on the clock right before the game and it's just reviewing that personnel film for the team again tonight. And when you talk about that individual film, that's when you all see the guys on the bench kind of with an assistant coach yeah. during that shoot around period and warm up just yeah. to give people some context. So most of the clips we're gonna watch are from that five game East Coast swing. During those five games, you're averaging 19 points per game. Five games. You remember that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> And we'll go through just a bunch of different sequences. And, and these first clips are what I think you've talked about, just being your comfort zone, right? Just the catch and shoot threes, wherever the guys hit you. Yeah. My question on some of these though is, how much time and space do you need to feel comfortable getting it off? I don't think it's as much about the space is it's more about like where the rhythm is with I catch it because I can get it off like I feel like I can get my shot off a few different ways so if I can like a lot of times if I catch it right near my chin and my knees are already bent like I don't need any time to get it off but on that like I had to take a little step back to the left and get my feet set so it's really just trying to read the guy too like a lot of times if he is that close, like, I'm probably better off driving the ball and either getting to the rim or finding someone else for a three anyway. So let's go back to that first play then because you talked about catching it right at your chin. And this one, the defender was closer. Right yeah. there, right? Yeah. And got it off just in time. The one thing you talked about when you first got to Milwaukee was like the fact that you were wide open. So after this clip, I want to show you, this is the, the next game. It'll be in DC. And you had a three pointer where I don't even think anybody was like <laughs> 10 feet from you. And I know you've talked about it. I looked it up in last season with Memphis, about 60% of your catch and shoot looks were unguarded. Whereas this season already 70%. I mean, do we just call that the Giannis effect? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the Giannis effect. And that's on higher volume too, so. Um... It's crazy how much attention he draws, and I actually remember this clip too. And full context, Grayson said he doesn't necessarily remember all no, the plays, but, but now it's starting to come back, yeah? yeah? Okay, so look at this one. My goodness. I mean, me and Bobby are wide open. You've talked about, like, being wide open is different, and people may not understand, oh, you're wide open, it should be easy. But when you're a shooter, how does that affect your rhythm? Uh, it, well, I think it messes with your head because it, it makes you think about it and you think that you have all this time in the world, so now you're like, okay, I can take my time, step into it, make sure everything's perfect. But I found, at least for me, and I think it's probably true for some other people too, is once you start doing that, you kind of lose a little bit of your rhythm and you start to think about it a little bit too much. So for me, I, I, even on this shot, like you just gotta step into it and shoot it. You can't take that extra time to make sure everything's perfect. That usually messes me up. And you think you started to get better at shooting wide, wide open Yeah, yeah as weird as it sounds. Right, yeah. it sounds wild. 
So now we're moving into the different elements of your game, and this is like off the dribble shots. This game in Boston, y'all are down by three, and it was almost like a two-on-two -two situation with you and Drew. Do you remember this specific yeah. play? Was this on purpose to have everybody on the other side and for you two just to go at it? No, this wasn't an, on purpose at all. So Coach Bud actually just kind of, we came down with the ball and he just let us play. He didn't call a timeout or get into anything. And so um, when you're down three, you know, you, you can, uh, 15 seconds left, you can attack the basket and get a quick two, or you can get into like a drive and kick situation. So I don't think me and Drew were doing it on purpose, but we were literally driving and kicking to each other for, I think it was three passes until we finally got a three. You mentioned that when you're in catch and shoot opportunities, you like to catch it at the chin area and you can just go right up. When you're off the dribble, what's comfortable for you? Um, I've gotten, uh, you know, it's, I feel like for a lot of right hand, right handers, it's more comfortable to go to your left to shoot, but I've actually gotten to the point where now I feel like I'm pretty comfortable going either way, right or left hand. Um, but this step back kind of going to your left as a right hander is always a little bit easier and that's what I got to in this clip. Boom, tie game. This next one in Atlanta, I believe, and you're off the dribble, but you take it all the way to the rim. I want to pause it real quick. Okay, so what I see right here is four hawks above the free throw line. And yeah, there's that help. To, I think that's John Collins down there. Um, but do you see that baseline as an opportunity at this point? Uh, well, I didn't notice the two guys on the weak side, but um, Atlanta does this some, and some other teams do. They like to get into that, really like to down the ball when it gets to the sideline. So instead of playing the pick and roll coverage towards the screen, they like to keep it away. But Capella in this situation isn't down there in the right spot yet because we brought it down on the break. So I kind of saw an opportunity because the guy on the ball is going to push me baseline and he's not all the way down there yet. So I should have a drive. And I think you were, yep. Do you think people underestimate your ability to get to the rim? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I feel like it's always been that way for me. Like that's been a, it's been a secondary part of my game. And especially now, now that I'm in the NBA, like most of the time I'm just shooting threes and I'm moving off of guys and finding open threes. I'm not getting down the hill that much. I don't have the ball in my hands that much. So, but when I do get the opportunity to, I know I can still do that and go finish at the rim. And, and how does your capabilities from the outside then open up opportunities to get to the rim? Uh, well, it makes it a lot easier because everyone's expecting me to shoot a three. So I get a lot of hard closeouts, a lot of guys jumping at shot fakes. Um, and then it's usually off of a scramble situation too, so that defensive help side isn't quite there. Okay, so this one, I don't necessarily need you to break it down, but I was like, this is a cool highlight to add in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> is there anything that indicates that you're like, okay, yeah, I've got the hops today for this? No, that's, for, that's, that's a pretty simple dunk for me. So I, I feel like I could, I got that any day. Left hand though? Yeah, left hand. It's, it's tougher dunking with the left hand when you're jumping off your left foot because it makes it a little bit awkward, but if I can get to my left foot, I feel like I can dunk it. And so far we've showed you scoring, but obviously there's other facets to the game. This is you making a play. And I'm wondering just what it's like to just throw it up to Giannis and see what he's gonna do with it. Well, I kinda, I had, I had that one telegraphed in my head that I was gonna throw it up, but the, the pass from Chris wasn't great. So I had to kind of, I was fumbling it, and then at that point, I'm just like, I, I mean, I put it up there like a foot and a half, two feet above the rim. I was just like, I'm just gonna throw it up there and see what he can do. With a guy like Giannis, is there art to throwing it up? Or if you just put it anywhere, he'll no, go get it. No, you just put it anywhere. It's like, like the worst pass you make, he's still gonna catch it, so it makes the dunk look better. <laughs> Defense is so important to this team. And, and you said it's almost like a gauge for you of how much you're contributing, because you feel like your shooting is almost a given. This is the first time you all played Detroit, and you're in weak side right here. How important is it to understand the characteristics of the Milwaukee Bucks defense when you're playing off the ball? Well, yeah, it's, it was, it's being ready for two things. When you're guarding a guy in the corner, um, you either have to be ready to help on the weak side, or you have to be ready for them to dribble your way for a handoff. So you have to be in that in-between stance, and then you're just ready to move either way. So this one, they go away from you. And I feel, I see you kind of like stunting a little bit. Yeah. Towards the rim. Okay, but this one, the recovery was pretty quick. Cause I mean, you're outside the block. Yeah. 
and then you recover to Stewart. Yeah, so it was kind of a weird spot because the ball handler is dribbling towards me instead of away from me, so I kind of had to stay home a little bit more. Uh, uh -huh. But then once he was wide open, I, I knew I had to go at least contest that at the rim. And this is the, the point where the guys say like it's it's nice to have like Giannis or Brooke down there rather yeah. than <laughs> But hey, you get the job done. You get the block. Next play here is in transition. I'm always fascinated when people are able to affect a play in transition without fouling. So on this one, it, it really is just you. I know Pat's trying to get back to help. What are you focused on in this moment? Well, it's just seeing where he's gonna pick the ball up. And so if I can get my chest in front of him. If I can get like in front of him, I could, I could get a hand on the ball no matter where he picks it up. So it's, he picks it up and tries to keep it away high. So like holding it in one spot actually made it a little bit easier for me to just get a hand on the ball and uh, block that. I feel like I saved that too. That was close. Oh, look at you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you thought you did. How, how does film help your process? Uh, well, for me, it, so much of the stuff is just about like little positioning and especially with shooting off ball. Um, you know, there was, there was one play last game where Giannis actually made a great quick tip pass out to me when he caught it in the post and I, I had started to move up from the corner to give him space. So I wasn't there. Um, and so for me, it's like next time, okay, that's, he know he can make this crazy tip pass, so I have to wait another half second there in the corner before I move, wait for him to catch it. So that's just an example of like very little positioning stuff that I kind of have to master, and that'll make, it'll make it better for the guys who are in the post or in the ISO, make it better for me getting off more threes, and then it works on that defensive end too. Just seeing the little intricacies that you can't pick up in game. So we've got this whole setup here. I know off the court, you're a gamer. And I'm, so I'm wondering like, do you have, and you do it online too, like do you have multiple cameras set up at home like this? No, with not your, multiple, with your remote? not multiple. <laughs> uh, I do have one, I, cause I stream on Twitch sometimes. So I have, I have two monitors at, at home and I have a desk. So I have one camera like above, above the two monitors. And then I play on the one on the right and the one on the left is, either has my stream up or if I'm multitasking while I'm playing a game and not streaming, whatever it is. Well, we appreciate the time. I figured I was like, well, I mean, the theme, film room in the theater kind yeah, of could be a good close. gaming setup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, thank you so much and best of luck rest yeah, of the season. Thank you. Appreciate it.